it feels to me, and the 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 market would agree, like the favorite for position for the Bears to draft is offensive line. That's the favorite. Logic is simple. Absolutely, yeah. Bears gave up 58 sacks last year. They need to protect the quarterback that they are trying to make their franchise quarterback in Justin Fields. They, they Pretty use, obvious, They right? use their free agent money, the biggest part of it, on linebackers and some other things. They did get the guard, but they still have a glaring need there at tackle. And getting a cheap and good one is very plausible where they are at nine. So, or maybe elsewhere. So for post position today, we figured Brian Baldinger takes it seriously. He does the film work. He ranks the top five tackles in this draft. We will play what he said about him, give our reaction, and go five to one. So here's Baldy, his fifth rated tackle in this draft. It's my fifth tackle. And I'm staying right there in Columbus, Ohio. And I'm looking at Dewan Big Thanos Jones. <laughs> Like, this guy is big enough to literally create a lunar eclipse. Like, he can blot out the sun. This guy is six foot eight and change. He's 375 plus pounds, maybe 380. He's got the longest arms I think I've ever seen coming out of the draft, almost 37 inches. His wingspan is almost seven foot five inches. And it shows up on films. I'm not just throwing these numbers and measurables at you. You see it when he hits people. Like, no defensive lineman can get to his body. Not when he puts his arms out. They're like putting redwood trees out there. Look, when you're that big, you're not going to be the swiftest guy. You don't have to be. He's a right tackle. And he's got... But when he hits people, he moves people. That's the key. When he hits them, he shocks them. He's not just a big puff daddy out there. Like, he's got power. And it shows. Like, he's got he we call heavy hands, anvils for hands. I could talk about Dewan Jones all day. I don't know if he's going to go in the first round because he's strictly a right tackle. He's, he's not a guard. He's not a left tackle. He's a right tackle. And you go, okay, what is he? Is he Orlando Brown? Like, I think he's got every bit the movement that Zeus has, but I think he's more powerful than Zeus. And Zeus has been playing and starting this league at right tackle, left tackle, and now just got his third contract with the Cincinnati Bengals. He's been playing at a high level in this league for a long time, won a Super Bowl and left tackle. But I think Dewan is actually more powerful than Zeus. And so I'm, I'm very interested to see, like, can he get out of the second round? So hmm. that guy is just one of the biggest human beings Possible. 6'8", 374, 36 uh, and a half inch arms. So like you said, basically, uh, you know, it's a 74 inch wingspan. Um, I like that he mentioned Orlando Brown Jr. Because Orlando Brown Jr., who Ryan Poles was there when they brought him into Kansas City, is 6'8", 340. So their physical profiles are very similar. But Poles said about Orlando Brown that the scheme fit didn't match for what they're trying to do here. Right. So I'd be surprised if he was pulls this guy, but it definitely wouldn't be until one of those you know picks in the 60s. Yeah, I, I, th this is not the guy for round one. They got to come out of this with somebody they feel really good about yep. as a plug-and-play tackle, and this guy is more of a project than than a plug and play tackle because he's so physically strong, he covers up some of his weaknesses with the physical strength. I think he might play day one. Uh, I think he might start day one, but like. If the Bears go defense, like if they take a defensive lineman, I could see them drafting him in the 61st pick, the 64th pick, or whatever. Then you get to the scheme fit. You yeah, know, and, it, and that's where that's where it makes it less likely. But you're but you're taking there you're taking leaps, right, on some guy. There's well, we're gonna work around scheme, or we're gonna work around size, or we're yeah. gonna work around uh, character. Like the, the the lower you go in the well, draft, the top four tackles that we're about to talk about, we've talked about or at least mentioned before. This one we have mentioned a little, but there, we weren't sure who his fifth was going to be. I thought maybe it was going to be Peter Bergeron of Syracuse. That like they might reach for a tackle in round two, or not reach for one, but yeah. go for one. I don't think this is the one that they would go for. That's I my guess. I tend to agree with you. Here's Brian Baldinger's fourth rated tackle in this draft. That gets me to the number four tackle, and some people are going to be shocked to hear that Paris Johnson is my number four tackle, who after starting 26 straight games at Ohio State, played 13 games at right guard in 2021, and he played 
13 games this year at left tackle. You know, he's got tremendous size. He's 6'6 six, six in the third. He's, he's uh, 315 pounds. Uh, he's got super long arms, over 36-inch arms. So you go, okay, why is he the number four guy? I just feel like his base is very narrow. I feel like he's going to have some problems with some real power guys. On the outside, Khalil Mack, some guys that just have power. I feel like he's going to struggle. Maybe not over the long course of his career because he's got good movement. He sets well. He's got great length. You know, I see some mock drafts and guys I respect setting him as high to the Raiders at number seven. And that might happen. Pittsburgh is picking number 17. They're doing their homeworks on left tackles. They're trying to rebuild their offensive line. It started in free agency bringing in Isaac Sayamalo and Nate Herbig. They need a tackle and they need a center. They want to fix their line, and I think they want to use this draft to fix it once for all. they got a new committee making the draft picks, you know, right now. So Pittsburgh could go 17, Paris Johnson. It would play well. The Jets at 13, but I don't think Paris Johnson gets past 19. I think they're just going to run on these tackles. I think they're going to go in this draft. I, I think tackles are going to get pushed up past wide receivers, and after the quarterbacks and maybe some corners, the tackles are going to go. Well, that's really interesting because where they pick is everything in that regard. It's it's doubtful that two tackles will be gone by nine, but if they trade down to 14 or something like that, then maybe they do need to think about the third or fourth ranked tackles. But either way, I haven't heard Paris Johnson Jr. that low on anybody's tackle rankings. I haven't either. Um, that will be Ryan Poles' job, obviously to make the evaluation of the player – but then also to make an evaluation of how he thinks the rest of the league will view the player. Because the whole game is taking a guy at the right spot for value if you can make it work, right? Like, if he stays, stays at nine and say his favorite tackle is Paris Johnson, but he's like, but I know that I can get Paris Johnson at 20, well, then you should do everything in your power to trade down from nine to 20 because you still get your guy. And you get another piece or two. like that. That is the mark of a good general manager. You want to basically spend the least amount of capital that you can mm -hmm. to, to get your guy. So if he agrees with Baldy, they definitely should be trading down. Uh, something scares me about Paris Johnson is that he's not incredibly strong against the bull rush. Yeah. But they love his football character. Um, and they believe that they can work with him with the strength coach and the O-line coach. But if you've got that project on the other side with Braxton Jones, do you want a second tackle whose strength you need to work on? That concerns me. That's fair. I mean, the guy played left tackle at Ohio State against some NFL caliber edge rushers and only gave up two sacks. Nitpicking a diamond is sure. what we're doing. All right, let's hear uh, Baldy's number three tackle in the draft. My number three tackle is one hell of a player, Peter Skaronsky. From Northwestern. Look, Rashawn Slater came out of there two years ago, went to the Chargers, played every snap, was a Pro Bowl player's rookie year. He was awesome. After not playing in the um, COVID season, opted out. But Skaronsky did. He played. So he he was the starting tackle. And, you know, Rashawn Slater helped him and coached him and all this stuff. But the guy, you know, the guy has started 33 games at left tackle for Northwestern. Like he is a, he's a technician. He's very strong. He bench pressed, you know, 225 pounds, 30 times, probably 500 pound bench press on him. The, the question really is just his physique. Is he big enough and long enough to go play left tackle? That's the question. I believe he could be a pro bowl guard day one. Like Chicago, he's from the Chicago area. I mean, Chicago's picking number nine. If they took Skaronsky, Skaronsky plays well in Chicago. Um, it's the name plays well. And he's from that area. He went to Northwestern right there in Chicago. So I feel like he could go as high as Chicago. But he not, not, might not be a left tackle. Maybe he's a left guard. Either way, uh, I think it's up to the team. You know, they, they have all these draft meetings, 30 meetings. They can have with prospective clients. I feel like some teams are going to draft him and play him at guard. Some teams are going to say, you know what, let's put him out there at left tackle and see what he does. Or right tackle. You know, I think, you know, he could be a right tackle as well. But, you know, he, he ran well. He ran, you know, under 5 40 and he was didn't give up a sack in 2022. Gave up one or two the year before. Really good prospect. Just, you know, the arms are a little bit short, shorter than you want. So measurables are important, unfortunately, in this, in this draft, especially when you're trying to strike gold at all these picks. Man. Number three. It's the pick that I don't want. Oh, it's the pick that I do want. I know. We're very opposed on this. I just, 
Okay, he can be a great guard. Okay. I think he's going to be a great tackle. I mean, if he's a great tackle, then it's a good pick. Yes, if he's a is. great guard, then it's a bad pick. 830-plus <laughs> snaps gave up six or fewer pressures allowed. He was the only tackle in college football to see that many snaps and give up that few pressures. It's a, but it's, a, it's just an outlier. It is a physical outlier at the position, and we've had guys who played the position, like Kyle Long, uh-huh. say that it matters. But we've had we've had others. Who was the guy we had on a, a PP without Danny who was pointing out some other? Joe Thomas didn't have super long arms. Like there, there have been more exceptions to that than 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 I believe that we have pointed out. First ballot Hall of Famer, Joe Thomas. Yeah, you know what I mean. It, but it's. Okay, Peter Skaronsky. It's very Peter Skaronsky going to be first ballot. All right, it's it, possible. It's 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 sure. It it is possible. And by the way, being a ten year starter at guard is not a bad thing. No, being a Pro Bowler or an All Pro at guard is, is is a great thing. It's just positional value. Like, would I rather have a good tackle or a great guard? I'd rather have a good tackle. I think he was born to do it and has perfected technique. Yeah. And that's what he focuses on to make up for any athletic issues, and you know what what you're getting in that regard. I I, I think he's going to be a stud. All right, Brian Baldinger's number two ranked tackle in this draft. Number two, I'm going to Georgia. Is Broderick Jones? This kid only started 19 games. I don't even know if he's 21 years old right now. He's he's a baby, just in you know just using terms here. Um, gosh, he's 6'5", he's 311 pounds, he ran a 49740, he's the fastest offensive tackle. This, not that that means all that much, but he ran a you know under a 175, 10 yard split, which is really good. You know, he's got good first step coaches. But when I watch him, he started 19 games at Georgia. I right, started four games in 2021, didn't start the national championship game. You know, they had Jamari Sawyer there, all right, who now starts for the Los Angeles Chargers this year. So it's not like he was sitting behind, you know, somebody that couldn't play. Like, he was waiting his turn. He got a chance to play there. But he started 15 games this year. And he's just a model of consistency. Like I said, I don't think he turns 21 until a couple months. Like, he's only going to fill out. He's going to get thicker and stronger. But I know what's not going to change is his footwork and his sets. His sets are clinic. Like, he, he gets off on the snap. He's got fast twitch. And then he's got these long arms. And he's very consistent in hitting his hands. Three years ago, Andrew Thomas came out of Georgia, left tackle, and he was the first tackle taken by the New York Giants. And I didn't love him. I liked him, but I didn't love him. I thought there were some flaws in his game, and it showed up his rookie year with the Giants. And I didn't think he was going to be a bust because I knew he was a coachable kid. But they've gotten through to him now. You know, he's there. Bobby Johnson, the offensive line coach, very good coach. He's an elite player right now. Uh, elite. He's his, he's not Trent Williams, but nobody is. But he's, he's, his, he's solid. He's exactly what you want. He was the fourth pick taken in the draft. I feel like Broderick Jones is further along right now than Andrew Thomas was because I don't see that flaw. His game is feet in the ground. He's got a great set. He does get overpowered, and he's only going to get stronger. He might end up being the best tackle in the draft, but I have not rated it as my number two right now. This is my guy. This is the guy that I, I drafted in the, the first and pod mock uh, a couple of weeks back. If they can get him with a trade down, I, I'd be ecstatic about it. Uh, I think he might be a right tackle, but he's long. Some of the the clips that you see on the internet of like his big run blocks mm-hmm. are just absolutely devastating. Obviously, highest level of football possible. And in practice, going up against all of the defensive linemen that Georgia has put in to the NFL yep. in, the, in the last couple of years. He did just turn uh, 21. And he kind of reminds me of McGlinchey as a run blocker, who we know, according to Brad Biggs, they made a huge effort at trying to sign in free agency. So, like, if they're going with a guy who, hey, maybe he doesn't isn't like your stereotypical left tackle. Well, if this guy can play right tackle and is a great run blocker, that's kind of what McGlinchey's profile was, and you get him for much cheaper than a $50 million free agent deal. I have no nit to pick with Broderick Jones. He's not my guy because I want to pick one, and I actually he's not my number two guy because I got a number two guy. Okay. But I, I, I'll be fine. If it's Broderick Jones, I'll be celebrating that and saying, all right, they got a guy. Let's see. All right, number one. This th- is my number two. Guy. This is your number two. Okay, interesting. <laughs> uh, Baldy's number one tackle in the draft. I'm excited to talk about my number one tackle in this draft. Look, Darnell Wright from the University of Tennessee is my number one tackle. Now, 
He isn't on a lot of people's boards, and that's fine. But I've watched him start 42 games for Tennessee. Guys play a lot of football. I've seen him play right guard. I've seen him play left tackle. I've seen him play right tackle. I saw him go up against Will Anderson Jr. at Alabama this year in that stunning upset of Tennessee over Alabama. And I saw Darnell Wright eliminate Will Anderson. Will Anderson is the undisputed number one defensive player in this draft. He has started every single game from day one in Tuscaloosa. Darnell Wright went up against him a number of times. I mean, at least 20 one-on-ones against him in the game and shut him out. All right, that's one. The year before, at left tackle in Tennessee. There he is going up against Trayvon Walker at Georgia, shut out. And he's got this Trent Williams ability just to be able to knock hands down and, and reset while he's moving his feet. Trent Williams does it. Nobody's better than Trent Williams in his business. Nobody does it like Trent Williams. And I see Darnell Wright doing it. I'm saying, is he studying Trent Williams' tape? Oh, by the way, he's also 6'5 and a half. He's 342 pounds. He's got arms from here to that banshee tree over there. I mean, almost eight-foot wingspan. And just a big old bruising mauler guy. Like, some days, he doesn't even block guys. He just mauls them. And he's got a flipper, just got a whole can of nasty in him. Darnell Wright, my number one tackle in this draft. Like, look, the Jets are picking number 13. I don't know if Mekhi Becton is going to look like Mekhi Becton this year. He looks good right now, but he's missed a lot of games. You know, I don't know if Dwayne Brown, if they're going to battle it out. But if they do, they need a right tackle. And if they're going to bring Aaron Rodgers in and make this deal done, give them the best wall possible. If you put Darnell Wright in that Jets lineup week one, by golly, they're going to be a better team. If you if Mackay's good and Darnell Wright is what I think he is, and you add, you know, Oliveira Tucker and Lakin Thomason, damn, the Jets are going to be good. And he's going to help me good. Man, this is good stuff from Brian Baldinger here on Paul's position. Uh, the main thing for me is the domination of Will Smith, or Will Anderson, excuse me. Chris Rock dominated uh, Will Smith yeah. uh, verbally in his last Netflix special. But, um, and Will Anderson saying so, so, and Baldy described all of that really well. Just, and he's going Trent Williams? He's going Trent Williams as a comp? Come on. That's a big comp. Yeah. Uh, that's a big it, Zero sacks allowed playing in the SEC. That's pretty good. Last year, zero sacks allowed. And this posits, much like your Broderick Jones, that they like Braxton at left tackle, and they're going to stick with that. Yep. 